So, Anna, you gave an excellent talk about Chivas on urate levels and uh, gout. Uh, could you put together the main results of this study? Yeah, thank you. Um, so I think the main results are that we're um, looking for genetic risk variants that influence um, the levels of uric acid in the blood and the risk um, of gout. And we um, currently look into studies of um, into results from more than 50 studies, and by combining them, we're able to identify many more genes um, that contain variants associated with urate levels and gout. And I think that's exciting because, um, for one, serum urate is um, tightly controlled, but we still don't know how exactly this occurs. And all the known findings before were related to urate transport, but now we seem to find a lot of genes that um, seem to operate on a different level. And I think it'll be exciting to understand more about the biology. Mm -hmm. so, so we are moving from a GWAS or genome area to a post-genome area. Could our results also have benefits for the patient in the near future? Well, hopefully. <laughs> so <laughs> I think these things do take some time, but Especially in the field of hyperuricemia and gout, it's important because many of the gout patients are not optimally treated. And even if you prescribe urate-lowering medication to prevent gout attacks, often um, this is not um, sufficient. And so I think there is a need for tr new treatment in these areas. And um, by understanding how these genes or the proteins encoded by these genes operate, we may be able to... Um, get to the stage where we can try to develop targeted therapies. And one example is the ABCG2 gene that we identified in association with gout and were able to <clears throat> establish its function as a urate transporter and its localization in the kidney. And that's something we want to follow up on to see if, if, if it could represent a novel therapeutic target. Okay. Thank you very much.